All right, so we got a pretty fascinating story out there, and that is that Bernie Sanders has not ruled out a third run for president of the United States. Now, he would be running again in 2024. I believe he would be 82 years old, and it's pretty interesting because there's a lot of prospects going on in 2024. Those prospects being, is Donald Trump going to run again in the Republican Party? If it's not Trump, who's going to run? Who's going to win? If Trump is not running, it's likely going to be another bloodbath like it was in 2016. Um, and then it's, is Joe Biden going to run again? If Joe Biden doesn't run again, is Kamala Harris the one who's going to run for president? Because keep in mind, anytime there's a Democratic incumbent, it's extremely taboo and almost untouchable to primary them. But let's say hypothetically Joe Biden decides not to run, but he handpicks Kamala Harris as his successor. Does that same tabooness and uh, unwillingness to challenge an incumbent stand? Because this is the vice president, the incumbent vice president, as well as uh, the person who is handpicked by the previous Democratic president. So it's interesting dynamics all around. But Bernie Sanders remains to be like the most popular politician in the country. Um, and he is somebody who, you know, he bowed out pretty early, even in this 2020 primary. So whereas people were accusing Bernie in 2016 of taking too long to bow out, he bowed out pretty quickly and he did it pretty gracefully. And he really worked really hard to get his supporters to support uh, Joe Biden pretty early on. So much so that I had even seen a lot of people who were, you know, Bernie haters giving him credit for Joe Biden's win. Um, I think I remember the Krasenstein brothers saying that stuff. So, you know, that may have made, made it so that his 2024 run is more digestible. Uh, so it says, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders has not ruled out another run for the White House if President Biden decides not to run for re-election, according to a memo written by one of Sanders' top advisors. So that's obviously the big qualifier here. It says, if President Joe Biden decides not to run for re-election. Now, Joe Biden's brain is obviously almost entirely mush, but nobody seems to give a fuck, so... I don't even really want to talk about that anymore because even though it's so insane, nobody seems to care. It doesn't matter. You know, he just had this issue where he mixed up Title 42 and the mask mandate so badly that he had to write a response out there. But also like an analysis of Joe Biden. And this is the thing, too, man. This is politics and the way it goes. You really have to analyze it. Donald Trump was, you know, this, you know, just off the cuff, just saying crazy, stupid shit all the time. And it looks like Joe Biden is essentially the same, except he's the Democratic version of it. And what you see is his dementia act activities, demented activities, the words he says, where he mixes up all this stuff. He forgets his Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, that's standing right behind him. It seems to actually work in his favor in a lot of scenarios. So I'll give you an example, like when he accidentally called, you know, uh, the proud boys, the poor boys, right? Like that comes off as a charismatic, you know, cool jab or, you know, there are these different scenarios where it actually comes off as something that's endearing and cool. He's the straight shooter like Trump, but he's a Democratic guy. So, you know, that's what we need to combat Trump. And so that's kind of what you see going on. Um, and so it actually ends up being endearing in his way, which is really bizarre, but no one seems to care. So it's just, you know, it gets kind of to tedious and tiring talking about it about how hey look there's been a billion gaffes he's handshaking the air or you know he's um calling you know uh theresa may margaret thatcher or he's doing all this crazy stuff saying he was vice president during the uh parkland shooting it's like whoa dude this is all you can't remember anything but nobody cares it's like i don't even know what to say anymore um but anyways, it goes on, it says, in the event of an open 2024 Democratic presidential primary, Senator Sanders has not ruled out another run for president. So we advise you answer any questions about 2024 with that in mind. Faiz Shakir, who was Sanders' campaign manager in 2020, wrote in the memo sent to allies on Wednesday. The memo, first reported by the Washington Post and obtained by CBS News, is titled, quote, Embrace the Attack. So it looks like they're preparing their 2022 midterm strategy to ultimately feed into uh, the strategy uh, for 2024. It looks like it's kind of like a combining effect. So it says, as camp campaigning heats up in states across the country, your political opponents and their corporate al aligned allies will try to make you feel defensive about Senator Bernie Sanders' support for your candidate, the memo says. Our advice is to embrace the attacks. 
CBS News reached out to Sanders' team but has not yet received a response. Mike Casca, Sanders' spokesman, told the Washington Post, while it's frustrating this private memo leaked to the media, the central fact remains true, which is that Senator Sanders is the most popular office holder in the country. It cites recent polling from YouGov that found Sanders is the most popular current office holder in the country, and an NBC News poll that found his endorsement would make 71% of Democratic primary voters more likely to support a candidate. Wow. Uh, it also touts Sanders' recent work in the labor movement, including an upcoming trip to Staten Island on Sunday to support organizing Amazon workers and to Richmond, Virginia to support organizing Starbucks workers. So like I said in my previous videos, Bernie Sanders has been hauling ass. He's been working his ass off, supporting all the different... Um, uh, labor movements and unionization movements across the country. Um, and so that's obviously something really good that he's been doing. He's He has not stopped working. If anything, he might even be working even harder. Um, I, my, I, as well as, you know, looks like a lot of other progressives have kind of given up on the main prong strategy of electoralism for getting progressive stuff done. I think that we still need to utilize electoralism as much as possible. But I think that the strategy of prioritizing electoralism has been a just gigantic failure. And so supporting unions and labor movements and stuff like that um, is honestly a potentially even more effective strategy for getting progressive uh, goals accomplished than uh, electoralism as a whole. And so we need to do a two pronged uh, strategy of one is, you know, you need electoralism, you need Bernie Sanders, you need AOC, you need these people in office, but you also really got to fight for labor unions and uh, labor movements, etc. Um, and so this is something that's really important. Um, so Sanders was the last Democratic candidate to drop out of the 2020 presidential primary in May 2020. Sanders told the Washington Post that the odds of him running for president again were, quote, very, very slim. I think it's very, very unlikely that I'll be running for president ever again, Sanders said. I think next time around you're going to see another candidate carrying the progressive mantle. Uh, some of the top names mentioned as potential future presidential candidates to run in the progressive lane are Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, who recently wrote a New York Times op-ed about what Democrats should do to improve their midterm prospects, and Representatives Ro Khanna of California and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York. So uh, there's also been reports of uh, Representative Ro Khanna potentially being one. He doesn't have a serious chance of winning, although I'd support his run because, assuming Bernie Sanders doesn't run, obviously, I would still support Ro Khanna's run because I, I think he's a really smart dude, think he's really progressive, and so I support him. But in terms of uh, logistically and whether or not he actually has a serious chance of winning, I don't think he does. Um, but I would still enthusiastically support his campaign. Um, AOC is, she's not ready yet. I have serious questions about her leadership skills. I don't believe she's a leader. Um, she's not good enough at communicating with people. And this leads to a lot of confusion and issues like we've seen with this Amazon situation. That doesn't mean that she's completely useless or anything like that. I still support AOC. But in terms of her being the uh, overall leader of the progressive movement, like I don't think she's Bernie Sanders. I don't think she has that. Um, so, you know, and she's too young now. Does she have the prospects of legitimately being like a progressive president maybe 10, 20 years down the line? Sure, yeah. Right now, no. Um, Elizabeth Warren has a serious chance, but she seems to have a similar issue to Bernie Sanders, which is that really having a difficulty with African-American voters. Uh, the Democratic primary is essentially controlled by the African-American voters because those southern states that really have no impact in the general election, like South Carolina or Alabama and those kinds of states, they're worth a lot of delegates in the Democratic primary, and they go first in the Democratic primary. And so uh, if you're going to just get, you know, shellacked and just rocked, like if you're finna just get 80-20, I think in one state, like... I think in this last primary cycle, something like Louisiana, I think I don't even think Bernie hit the 15 marker to qualify for any statewide delegates. Like, that's insanely embarrassing. Um, but it does seem like, you know, a, a majority of the African-American, uh, you know, voting demographic, it just, you know, it's very homogenous in terms of how they vote. Seems to just kind of pick one candidate and just go with that candidate with Bernie, uh, with Joe Biden. You know, there were like a billion candidates, but, you know, South Carolina went with just Joe Biden, essentially. So... That's what it seems like. Obviously, younger African-American voters are going to be more supportive of Bernie Sanders. But in terms of holistically, the entire, you know, uh, African-American voting demographic, there just doesn't seem to be that many younger voters. Right. The amount of younger voters is supremely trumped by the amount of the sheer amount of older voters. And Joe Biden himself said, you know, they're a homogenous voting group. Right. He said that he didn't really get into much trouble. But, you know, what he said is essentially true. 
Um, now, it doesn't mean that younger voters aren't more likely to support Bernie Sanders. They are, but in terms of sheer numbers, the younger voters are just completely you know, demolished by the older voters. Um, and so if you're finna get like 80-20, 75-15, you're not, you're not going to win. It's just not going to happen. You won't be able to win, um, especially because, like I said, those states have 60, 80-plus delegates. That's a lot of delegates. You can't win because you're not going to smash Michigan and those states by, like, 20 points. You're looking at winning Michigan at best by, like, maybe 5, 10 points. There's just no way to make up that ground. And this is the same issue that Bernie Sanders had in 2016. And even though he was given the advice for 2020, Make inroads with, inroads with the black community. Try to get Jim Clyburn not to endorse Joe Biden, even if he's not going to endorse you. You got to do that kind of thing. He didn't listen. He didn't do any of that. That fucked him. Um, and so that's a, something I would have to tell him. Like, bro, you have to get African-American voters. The only way that you could get away with not getting a lot of African-American voting support is if somehow in the Democratic primary, there was a big split in terms of who de who African-American voters were voting for. We didn't see that in this past primary because, like I said, like, just seems kind of like a homogenous voting block. Um, and there was already, you know, Joe Biden was the uh, person who was the Clintonian, you know, human centipede. It started out with Bill Clinton, then it went to Hillary. You got to remember, Obama wasn't even winning the black vote um, until Oprah. So, you know, it's just like, it's not even necessarily to do with skin color. It's just like, they just have a pick and that's who it is. So, you know, uh, he would be the one who would get the majority of it for sure. But the only way you could get away with getting like 10 or 15% of the African American vote in the South only way you could get away with that is if there was an extreme split of who African-American voters were going to vote for in the primary. That'd be the only way. And the likelihood of that is just low. I just don't see it being all that split, to be honest, because it just doesn't seem like that's something that's going to happen. Um, and Elizabeth Warren has the same problem. Elizabeth Warren kind of just has like, she has a lot of women voters and she has, you know, more like your white liberal woman, but that's pretty much it. Like, it's not a diverse voting block at all. That's basically it. Now, I would still support Elizabeth Warren if she were to run, even though she backstabbed Bernie Sanders and the progressive movement. Um, you know, politics at the end of the day is about getting done what you can. It's a game at the end of the day. Um, and she would definitely support more stuff than not that I would support. Um, and so because the options are so low... You know, I would still be pretty enthusiastic about supporting Elizabeth Warren because we would at least be able to get some good stuff done that would legitimately have real impacts um, on, on the country, right? So I would still support her, but her political instincts are complete garbage. It reminds me of AOC's political instincts, you know, that whole Native American debacle and all this stuff. You know, it's, it's a complete mess. Um, but, yeah, so... Joe Biden, the thing about this is Joe Biden is actually reportedly, he told Barack Obama he's seriously running in 2024. Um, it says President Biden privately told former President Barack Obama that he's running for re-election in 2024, according to a report, hinting that he's serious about winning a second term and not just saying so publicly to avoid making himself a lame duck. Biden, 79, is already the oldest ever president and would be 86 if he completes his second term. So, you know, he, the reports are saying that he's the only one that could beat Trump. He says, I believe he thinks he's the only one who can beat former President Donald Trump. I don't think he's there. Uh, he's He thinks there's anyone in the Democratic Party who can beat Trump, and that's the biggest factor. I don't really think it has anything to do with that. I think it's more self-serving than anything else in terms of why he's going to run. I really don't think he's just running for the good of the Democratic Party. I don't think he really cares about that. Obviously, you want to be president of the United States. Um, whether or not anybody else can beat Donald Trump is, a, is an interesting question. Can Elizabeth Warren beat Donald Trump? Probably not. So it is going to be tough to find a Democratic candidate that can beat Donald Trump. Is Joe Biden even going to be able to beat Donald Trump this time around? I don't know. It's going to be tough to see how the polls shape out. Obviously, uh, the numbers on Biden right now are not looking too hot, but that, that could definitely change as time goes on. So, you know, his approval could go up as, you know, the opponent is, uh, you know, revealed a la, you know, Larry Elder, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom battle, right? Um, so, you know, another thing I don't like is pretty much the entirety of Bernie Sanders' staff in the 2020 presidency. I felt like we're terrible. Faiz Shakir, I'm not in favor of. Brianna Joy Gray, I felt like 
in a very non-constructive way just flame tensions on twitter there's a there's a legitimate way to you know have a campaign doing attacks and going after other people like you know david sirota's advice on in terms of attacking joe biden from bernie sanders i thought was a good idea but i think that what brianna joy gray did ultimately was not something that was productive and uh and you know good for the progressive movement so it's going to be pretty fascinating to see what ends up going down. I, th I don't think it's going to end up happening because I think ultimately Joe Biden is going to run again. Uh, we should be getting announcements. I mean, and not too long. I mean, it's what, uh, what is it like April 2022? So, you know, usually you start getting that stuff around like I think next year, right? 2023, April. Um, so, you know, who knows what exactly is going to happen. Uh, Bernie Sanders is he does actually have a decent chance of winning the democratic nomination uh he was the second uh, in the competition last time around he bowed out pretty early and i think that liberals were pretty satisfied with how he did it and tried to get joe biden help and so maybe that will at least lead to some sympathy from the libs uh from the liberals uh, you saw the polling number, 71% say that, you know, an endorsement, a Democratic endorsement would, you know, uh, push a Democrat to support that candidate. So Bernie Sanders definitely has some sway. Uh, if he does not effectively garner African-American support, he will get fucked again. And until he realizes that he's not going to win, I would fire your entire staff from 2020. They were all straight garbage. Um, they did horrible, horrible stuff. Uh, so get rid of all of them. Uh, I would say go back to some of your 2016 staff guys. I thought that the Mark Longabaugh guy was a, was a good strategist for the campaign. Focus on TV ads, really work on having some really good TV spots. Um, just throw everything you did in 2020 in, in the garbage and just start anew. Focus on gaining African-American supporters. Focus on TV spots and advertisements. Focus on building bridges within the Democratic Party with other politicians. Even if you don't get their endorsement, if you can if you can be get it so that they're not going to endorse you or endorse your opponent, that's a dub. And so that's what you got to do. If you got to have dinners with, you know, Jim Clyburn or whatever and try to, like, you know, coax him or, you know, get him into not endorsing your opponent, that's what you got to do. Um that's how it works right so you know if he doesn't follow any of that stuff and he just rerun the only way he would be able to win with the same shit that he did in 2020 like i said if the african-american support in the democratic party is legitimately split where nobody has a majority if nobody has a majority um you could still lose because again the margins you're going to win in states like michigan and stuff like that if you can even win those states you have to win michigan and ohio and those guys in states first that's not easy uh bernie didn't win those last time around and he actually uh you know in 2016 he barely won them but even on a day like michigan which was a big dub for him he had a net loss when it came to delegates because it was some you know like i said some random southern state or whatever that has no bearing on the general election, by the way. So it's stupid to have them having so many delegates. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but, you know, um, he was net negative on the day. So you're not going to win those states by that much. It's just not going to happen, especially if it's all super split. you got to stay at least in the ballpark because if you don't, you're going to get fucked. So um, that's the only possible ways. If everyone's like evenly split amongst the top brass of the election, let's say it's like Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, and they each are getting like, I don't know, 20, 25% of the African American vote in the Southern States. And then the rest is split amongst other candidates. That's the only way you could do that. And at that point, you're banking on winning enough of the other percentage of the other States to be able to then beat that. Or if you're trying to be in a deficit, you're going to somehow have to overcome that deficit in other states, which is going to be really hard. So if Bernie Sanders really is able to boost his support amongst African-Americans, I mean, it's over. It's a wrap. If Even if, bro, even if you can get 60-40, that meaning, you know, let's say it's like a two-man game, essentially. Uh, if you can get 40% of the African-American vote in the South while your opponent gets 60, you have a chance. But you can't get 80 20 
you can't get 70 30 like you can't it has to be at least 60 40 has to be your lowest margin in terms of what you're going to get in the south amongst african-american voters if you can't at least get 60 40 you are fucked there's no way to overcome that deficit there's too many delegates too much percentage that you know too large of a deficit and it's way too hard to overcome that in other states so and also you got to keep in mind bro like the more you're winning in the early time the more it's going to impact your winning later on so you got to get support amongst african-american voters whoever the next progressive candidate is to be able to get african-american uh, african-american voter support and that don't i don't even mean by that like a majority if you get a majority <laughs> if you say you get like 60 and your opponents get 40 you won that's it it's a wrap okay like if you can get if you get 60 percent of the african-american vote in the south that's it you dubbed it up it's over the primary is over the, you won but that's going to be really fucking hard to do. <laughs> That's really hard. Um, and so if you can get like at least you have to get at least 40 percent. If you can't get 40 percent, the only way possible is if it's like evenly split. The African-American support in the South is evenly split. But that's so unlikely given how homogeneously African-American voters vote. So it's unlikely that it's going to be a legitimate split. They were like, what? five trillion candidates in 2020 and they all voted for joe biden so except for you know the whatever little younger african-american voters there were uh that you know went for bernie sanders or someone else and honestly a lot of people don't realize the key to south carolina being much more split was actually tom steyer so tom steyer uh in the polls was actually pulling a lot of joe biden's vote that's why joe biden started shitting on tom steyer was because he was taking his african-american voters according to the polls but that didn't end up panning out in the election for, you know, maybe it was Jim Clyburn, you know, I don't know. But, you know, that's that's the way it would, it would go. But Bernie has a chance. But if he does the same shit that he did in 2020, he'd have to get really lucky to win because he'd somehow have to get like one of the most homogenous voting groups in the game uh, of politics to somehow be split amongst everybody, which is just oof. I just find that to be so unlikely. So. You know, the strategies I would recommend, hang on to FDR's nuts, you know, run ads talking about Social Security TV ads, by the way, because YouTube ads are not going to reach the old black voters in the South. It's not going to reach old voters in Florida. It's just not going to do it. So you got to run TV spots like they did in 2016. You got to run good 2016 ads, run ads touting, you know, uh, attaching yourself to FDR, even run ads of Obama saying good stuff about you. Do all that kind of stuff. Like, you need real hard strategies here to actually win the election. So if they run the same BS in 2020 that they did in 2020, I mean, their chance of winning is just so low. And just fire your whole 2020 staff. Fight Shakir, gone. Like, just get all these guys out, bro. Brianna Joy, great, gone. Like, get some real constructive people who genuinely know the logistics game genuinely know the strategy game the statistical game know how to do things productively you know there's a productive way to you know call out or antagonize your opponents or your opponents as supporters the way that Brianna Joy Gray did it was not a productive manner um and so you definitely you know that that's the stuff that you need to do